What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a special project, one that I really like to do because if you look at the results, like the befores and then the afters, they're, I mean, night and day difference. If you look at it right here, I mean, you can barely see through this headlight, a lot of oxidation, uh, lots of scratches, potentially based on some of the uh, debris that we found on the bottom. Looks like somebody already tried through these headlights and they just weren't successful. So let's run through the process right now of what it takes to restore these headlights. Starting off first, tape. This is essential. Uh, and the reason I say it's essential is because if you don't tape off these edges, right? As you're wet sanding, as you're polishing, as compounding, whatever it may be, you're gonna touch the edges. And you don't wanna do that with your uh, pads. You don't wanna do that with your wet sanding. None of that because it can potentially harm your paint. So let's not harm the paint. Let's not harm the customer's car. Let's tape things off. Don't be lazy. So starting off with the tape, pull, stretch it out. And guys, something I like to do is get underneath the light, okay? So you have nice coverage underneath, no kind of gaps. And this is automotive tape, so it's got a little flexibility to it. Not a whole lot, but some. So stretch it and manipulate it around so that when you're flush and polishing, you know, with your three inch here and you accidentally kind of scuff the side, the tape is protecting it. And that's the point of the tape. So I like to run two towards the bottom end here. Okay, you got that. You wanna go ahead and do the same thing to the top. And like I said, I like to get in it. So kind of get into these little grooves here. Uh, what the heck? All right, skip that here in a second. Once again, kind of following these grooves. And you don't wanna cover any of the headlight. Once again, a little tuck in here, boom. And if you have to do a little second one just to make it quicker, by all means, do it. You're gonna find little crevices like this. I like to cover them just for safety. You do you. So, boom, and this little crevice here, that little spot is bothering me, and boom. Put this little guy there. All right, that's all taken care of. This up top here, this is good. Not all the time does this tape, the tape play nice. So manipulate it, cut it, do what you gotta do. And if there's any tape companies out there, you know what I'm saying? Goddamn tape. All right, anyways, boom, got that, got that covered all the way up to here. This little piece is missing. Let's go ahead and make that little triangle. Hey, boom, that's done. Just for safekeeping, let's, so that's covered. See if you guys are seeing me. Okay, great. So as you guys can see there, I'm gonna do a quick little zoom in here so you guys can really see what that looks like. All of this whiteness is oxidation. You can kind of feel it. there's little scratches. So like I said, somebody potentially attempted this before. Well, let's go ahead and do it right. So back out and this is what it looks like. So first on my list, I have my little three inch DA. This little random kit on Amazon had a couple different um, wet sanding, you know, little strips and uh, sanding discs, I should say. So three inch discs. Yeah, bought this on Amazon, not good for paint, decent for headlights. Came with this little backing plate. So you wanna go ahead and put the backing plate on your DA and boom. Actually, I'm not gonna start with the 3000, which I normally do because earlier when I was doing the 3000, it wasn't enough cut. Like I said, somebody has attempted, there's like a heck of a lot of, a heck of, a lot of scratches going across. And sometimes I've had a scenario where the scratches are too deep and so even, doing all of the wet sanding techniques, you're not cutting enough to remove all of it. So this is kind of just a little bit of a best practice. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do 2K. And 2K can be a really good place to start. I think the lowest I've usually, uh, I've ever gone is like 800 or so, but that's like on like a crazy severe case. So you wanna go ahead and put your little 2K disc on your backing plate, get you a little thing of water, a little squirt there, a little squirt there, and a squirt on your disc. Now I kind of just dab it and spread it around. Make sure you're on, I'm gonna go for speed four and a half on this. And this is a wet sand, guys, so don't ride the edges. Make sure you're kind of staying as much into the uh, headlight as possible, but hit it, or in the words of detail groups, send it. So guys, a quick little thing here. As you're polishing, I'm sorry, as you're wet sanding this, you're gonna see this uh, white kind of film gunkiness, kind of almost look like a little bit of chalk coming off. And that's your oxidation that you're, you know, since shaving a little layer off the uh, top of the headlights here. So that's kind of the gunkiness you're gonna go. So if you're a bit of a first timer, don't be terrified. I was when I first started, but that's just how it goes. So 
I'm not sure what is happening here. I think my backing plate's a little uneven. The DA wasn't spinning properly. Let's do a little lubrifications again. So I like to give it a quick clean here and there just to see where we're at with the cut. Two and three K, even though it's on a DA, isn't a, a lot of cut, to be completely honest with you guys. So don't get too worried about cutting too much. You're not gonna do that if you're just using a two or three K. Uh, like right now I'm using two, right? So as you guys can tell, it does create a fogginess to your headlights, but that's normal. That's just the process. And what I like to look at when I'm doing something like this is uniformity. So if some reason, which I'm looking at right now in like this area right here, for some reason my DA wasn't spinning properly, whereas over here I got some good spins. So what's that telling me is this area here needs a little bit more wet sanding. Either A, this is total crap, as you guys can kind of tell, and I'm have to switch this out, which I'm gonna do right now. Go ahead and get the 2K again. Try to put it as evenly as possible on your DA. That's a fresh one, as you guys can see. And the reason I'm gonna be hitting it again, as I mentioned, somebody had previously tried this. So it looks like there's still a little bit of marks there that I'd like to get out, or at least blend in a little bit better. And that's a couple dots of water. Send it. So you guys see here when I replaced the uh, disc here, that this area was spinning a lot more again. Before, the previous one just had too much gunked up. Uh, it got too much gunked up, and so they kind of stopped when it came to this area. So I'm gonna just run it one more time. And this is what we're looking for. You wanna make sure your DA is spinning at all times. If your DA is not spinning properly, it's not cutting properly. Okay, missed the water. Smooth it out. Okay, so now I feel that my uniformity is good throughout the headlight here. I'm gonna need the same kind of milky or fogginess throughout the whole headlight, not more so on one side than the other. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And you can kind of look at it in the light and you'll see, uh, they look like little mini scratches kind of going throughout the panel. And that's just, like I said, from your uh, disc here. So that was a 2K disc. Let's go ahead and pull out a little 3K disc. All right, so kind of the same way, go ahead and put your three inch, whoops, here it is, okay. Put your uh, 3K disc on your three inch, little agua, the glide, and send it. Okay, so that should be enough here. And you'll notice that the all of the wet sand, they'll leave some sort of haze. But as you go up in the numbers, you do bring a little bit more clarity out, right? Because you're refining the set before. So the 3K disc refined the 2K wet sand marks. And now I'm kind of looking at it. And once again, it's just one full haze throughout it all, one uniform haze pattern. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So now go ahead and remove your backing plate. Go ahead and remove your disc. And what I like to use just because I have so many of them at the moment. My three inch wool, that's what you guys are seeing there. Of course, step one compound, put about three dabs, spread it across the area you're working on. Okay, I like to go ahead and put speed five for this one and send it. Hmm. So, what am I seeing here? I'm looking close and it looks like this area here wasn't quite touched, wasn't quite touched by the force growth by the um, by the wet sand mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my 3K. And let's go ahead and sand this little piece here. It wasn't quite hit with the uh, DA. I think I saw a little bit over here too. And so you don't have to have a three inch with all these backing plates and this and that. That's just for us to make it go a little bit faster and a little bit more uniformity. Kind of preference as well, because by all means you can use your hand. And I've always done it like this, to be honest with you guys. Lately, we've been having to move a little quicker. You know what I'm saying? More work coming in. So we got to adjust our processes. So now that I did a little quick fix right there, boom, let's throw another three dabs. See what happened there, guys? This is exactly what I was referring to. If you're not taping off your edges properly, accidents will happen. Anyway, slap another thing on there, send it. Okay, we went ahead and did that. Now let's, one more. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So we already did the compound stage with the wool, which 
Yep, which I knocked out. I'm gonna run that back one more time. And let's go ahead and clean the pad here. I think my microfiber, I'm sorry, my wool was a little bit on the dirty side, so I wasn't giving the right cut. Put another couple dabs of step one and send it. So that had the cut I wanted, okay? And you can look in the light, kind of looking different angles too, up, down, around. You wanna make sure you're taking everything off. The, uh, it, it, those are not something that you can remove, especially not from the inside, but there are some headlights that have a lot of damage on the inside. So sometimes the client might see this and all that damage on the inside and think, hey, maybe it's the detailer's fault they didn't clear, uh, you know, clear it up enough, but it's not the case. So just to address that, our blue foam, then put on your pad or put on your DA, a little bit of compound, and you can go down a little bit on the speed maybe four and a half. Okay, go ahead and take the tape off. Because she is a beauty right now. Boom, boom, boom. Take all this off, take this, grab this, pull this, grab that. Pull that. Whoa. And this process that I just used is not gonna work for all headlights. In some instances, the headlights are more damaged, there's more oxidation, they're shaped differently, million and one different things. So you might have to adjust, you know, what grit you're going, uh, how much, you know, passes you're doing, so on. This is the general. Where's my cleaning product? Right over here. Oh, right behind me. Surface Clean is our wax compound polish remover. This stuff is legit. So you wanna go ahead and spread all over the panel, in particular the headlight. Go ahead and clean your panel off. Like I did with the previous one, you wanna go ahead and inspect. Every once in a while, you might still get a little uh, scuff kind of around the paint here. So what I like to do really quick is just get a little dab of compound, put it on your pad like that, and just do a Obviously, it is not something you do when your car is ceramic coated because that little mini polish there, just on these edges, will take away your clear coat. I mean, your ceramic coating, so don't do that. A little bit different here in this scenario. So, that's clear. I wanna go ahead and get a little dry towel. Just gonna buff off the air, make sure it's fully dried. Okay, so now it is. The coating we use for our headlights is called Extreme Nano, and this coating is fantastic. Extremely versatile. Very good on durability. It's a five year coating. And one neat thing about it, if you look really close, these are little shards of glass. So, this coating does a really good job in crystallizing. And that's exactly what you want for these headlights. A couple drops will do the trick. Come on, get out of there. Okay, there it is. So, got a couple dabs here. You want to run that across the area you're working on. And, like always, then fill it in. There's not really a cure time on this. You're not gonna be watching your watch and counting and this and that. Once you coat your area, feel comfortable with it, go ahead and grab your clean rag and wipe it off. I like to do one full wipe with one side of the towel, right? Because there's eight sides. You wanna go ahead and flip it and do the same thing on the other. Give it a really nice wipe. Might feel a little staticky, it's okay. Go ahead and wipe down all your panels as well. Don't leave any coatings on the side of the panels. And that's that, guys. We got Extreme Nano to protect. We had our little wet sand, stick, wet, wet sand discs to clean and clear all the oxidation. And of course, step one compound to do all of the polishing and refinement. So that's that. Appreciate you guys listening. I know I'm boring, but I try to drop some knowledge. So if I can help, that's what I'm here for. Guys, enjoy.